Our Search for Solution project is about increasing phytoplankton through ocean iron fertilization. So what are phytoplankton? Phytoplankton are microscopic organisms that live in the ocean and they serve many functions in marine ecosystems. Uh, for one thing, they are the main diet for many marine animals like jellyfish, shrimp, and whales. But perhaps their most important role is that they photosynthesize much like plants since they contain chlorophyll. And because they're buoyant, they float near the top of the ocean where they are able to use sunlight to produce oxygen while absorbing car carbon dioxide throughout this process. A study done by the European Commission stated that about 10 billion tons of CO2 are transferred from the atmosphere to the ocean and phytoplankton produce nearly half the daily oxygen in our atmosphere. Because they're so vital in regulating carbon, it is alarming that phytoplankton have been decreasing steadily about 1% every year due to various climate change effects, which creates this positive feedback loop. One such effect is the stratification of ocean layers where the increase in water temperatures inhibit nutrient mixing. So phytoplankton exhaust the nutrients available to them. Another climate change effect is ocean acidification, which challenges some phytoplankton to create dense shells resulting in smaller and lighter organisms that have a hard time sinking to sequester the carbon. A solution to minimize the effects of climate change in the future is by using phytoplankton, particularly gene geoengineering, to get them to grow and bloom in certain areas. Phytoplankton require inorganic nutrients like nitrates, sulfur, and phosphates. So by adding iron into the ocean, phytoplankton can be grown like in this picture of the Barents Sea, where the swirls of blue and green indicate phytoplankton growth. Here's a visual of how this process works. First, iron is dumped into the ocean, allowing for the phytoplankton to begin to bloom capturing carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. And when the phytoplankton dies, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean, trapping the CO2 into the ocean floor sediment. In modern times, the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere have readily increased due to anthropogenic causes. Many of these greenhouse gases include the gases listed on this graph, but the main one to pay attention to is the largest part of the graph, carbon dioxide. The slope of carbon dioxide seems to be increasing with no intention of decreasing anytime soon. Therefore, it is important for society to not only become carbon neutral with new technologies and policies, but to be carbon negative by taking some of this harmful carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And that's just what ocean iron fertilization does. Phytoplankton take in carbon from the atmosphere and sequester it when they sink to the bottom of the ocean once they die. Thus, the process is carbon negative. Removing carbon from the atmosphere is crucial to reducing humans' impact on the planet. The phytoplankton serve as a biological pump to help move the carbon. Here you can see an example of a large phytoplankton bloom and how it's visible in the ocean, as seen before. With more phytoplankton like this, more carbon can be removed. The process of moving carbon from the atmosphere to another sink, in this case, ocean floor, is helping the environment. The practice of ocean iron fertilization can be a sustainable practice. This is because once the iron is dumped into the ocean, the environment takes care of the rest. Phytoplankton grow, they capture carbon, they die, and sequester that carbon in the bottom of the ocean. This does reduce a lot of waste, specifically carbon dioxide. According to a study done by German scientist Victor Smetasek, ocean iron fertilization can really make a large impact on the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. This one study found that each iron atom placed in the ocean can encourage phytoplankton to take in at least 13,000 carbon atoms. This ratio is huge and strongly shows that the large amount of carbon can be sequestered with a small amount of iron. Of course, phytoplankton can be eaten by other organisms and then introduced into the food system, which would then introduce it back into the atmosphere eventually. <clears throat> However, this study shows that most of the phytoplankton, over 50%, die and sink to the ocean floor. This indeed proves that the successful sequestration of carbon, proving this process to be a major benefit for the environment. So what is required to accomplish this? So iron fertilization is a relatively new idea. And the first case 
or experiment was done in 1990 and only 13 experiments have been done since then. So more study is required in real world cases to figure out how it works and the real benefits or negatives of doing so. So the most recent study was done in 2012 and uh, to the right, there's an image of iron sulfate being dumped and it was dumped into international waters uh, off the coast of Canada by the Haida Salmon Restoration Corporation. So more testing is required because the environmental benefits are unconfirmed. So as mentioned before, there are studies that state that introducing this iron causes blooms of phytoplankton, which in turn sequesters carbon. But other scientists are uncertain how much carbon is actually sequestered from iron fertilization. So more studies required to figure this out. So criticisms and limitations. So there's a lot of legal limitations in place that restrict where studies can be done. So the UN Convention on Biological Diversity and the London Convention on Ocean Pollution have strict rules uh, limiting where ocean fertilization can be performed. So since they, as of right now, they can only be conducted in the open ocean, which greatly limits, it, limits the possible testing sites. In addition, there are possible negative environmental factors. So adding all of this iron causes blooms of phytoplankton, which is how carbon would be sequestered, but you could also cause blooms of species you did not intend to bloom, one such being Pseudonychia, which produces neurotoxin uh, demoic acid that may actually kill mammals and birds. So if you end up growing species you didn't intend to, that could be a negative environmental effect. So another thing is there is money at play here. So there are carbon trading markets uh, exist off of ocean fertilization companies selling their offset carbon credits for profit. And uh, with there being no way to reliably account for how much carbon is being sequestered, this is these numbers uh, and this money being traded right now isn't really a set amount. So it's not possible for it to be more reliable without further study of how much carbon is being sequestered. Um, with that being said, if it works, it's a fairly cheap and cost-effective method because all you need is fine iron powder, which is pictured to the right here. So it only costs about $500 to $1,000 per metric ton. And it's been found that per metric ton of iron, uh, 3,000 tons of carbon dioxide can be fixed. So that comes out to being about 33 cents per metric ton of carbon dioxide sequestered. So comparing this with soil carbon sequestration, which costs about 10 to $20 per ton of carbon dioxide sequestered, iron fertilization is significantly cheaper. So in summary, phytoplankton capture carbon from the atmosphere and produce oxygen. And by adding iron to the ocean, more phytoplankton will begin to bloom. This process is sustainable in that it's carbon negative. It extracts carbon from the atmosphere to store in another sink, which is the ocean floor. So this is a pretty new idea and more testing is required, but there's also limit legal limitations that restrict testing. And the environmental benefits are unconfirmed, so we need to figure out how much iron is actually being sequestered, how much carbon is actually being sequestered. And there's also possible negative effects if you're growing species you didn't intend to bloom, but overall it's a cost and it's a cheap and cost-effective method if it works. And here are our sources. Thank you so much for listening.